Hello and welcome to this uh, background video in the background playlist uh, from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club and today we're going to have a look at pi, radians and angular velocity. Now why are we looking at pi, radians and angular velocity? Well first of all it's perfectly possible to pass the full license test without learning the concepts in this video. They are perhaps a little bit uh, beyond what is required. But that approach requires you to accept some formula on faith, that is not understanding if you like what's in this video, effectively learning and applying uh, them in parent fashion. This video will give you deeper understanding and I hope ultimately make the learning experience more rewarding. And you may want to watch this video first, that is also in the background series and it's on electromagnetic induction. It'll give you some background. So why are we looking at these concepts? Um, some of the uh, formula that you encounter, uh, R equals V over I, uh, you will have encountered at foundation level and that's the opposition to current flow by a resistor. At advanced level and also the concept is introduced at intermediate level, uh, you will look at uh, this formula here, the uh, Re uh, inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi f l where l is in henry's and that describes the opposition to current flow by an inductor um, and this one xc the capacitive reactance equals 1 over 2 pi f c where c is in farads describes the opposition to current flow by a capacitor and these are for ac signals uh, and the 2 pi f part of it if you like um, is what we're looking at today um, and you can either just simply uh, look at the equations in the um, equation sheet in the exam and apply them by typing 2 times pi in your times f in your in your calculator or we can have a little look at this uh, term in a bit more detail now we can rewrite these formulae and we will understand why at the end of this video uh, like this XL equals 2 pi FL can become XL equals omega L. And XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC can become XC equals 1 over omega C. And what have we done here? We've simply replaced the 2 pi F with omega. Now I should make a note here that we talk about the Greek letter omega in terms of the ohm, and that is the horseshoe shape, the uppercase uh, omega capital ohm, uh, capital uh, omega and the lower case which looks a bit like a w uh, is for angular velocity and that's that 2 pi f term and we're looking a bit further at that now so omega equals 2 pi f and it's the angular velocity in radians per second now this will be a bit confusing uh, to some and so we'll go through the explanation of what we're doing uh, now. And we'll first of all look at pi, and then we will look at radians, and then we will look at angular velocity. Let's start with pi. A lot of people's eyes uh, glaze over when they see pi, but it's quite a simple concept actually. What is pi and where did it come from? Well, it came from Pythagoras of Samos, apparently, around 500 BC. And he determined that if you have a circle, and if we call the uh, circumference C, and you have a diameter, and you call the diameter D, then the number that you get when you divide the circumference by the diameter, no matter the size of the circle, is a number which he called pi. So c over d equals pi, or pi equals c over d. And this is true whether you go from the smallest glass bead you can possibly imagine to the largest uh, solar system or perhaps even galaxy that you can imagine. Anything that is circular has this relationship. It's a, an enduring relationship for all sizes of circle. So Pi is simply the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. 
And Pythagoras, I think, came up with a value of about 22 over 7, which I think is correct to two decimal places. Uh, and there's pi, uh, correct, I think, to uh, five decimal places. Um, but it is a never-ending and non-recurring number. Uh, and if you are interested in pi, have a look on the net. There's plenty of material there discussing the more esoteric uh, features of pi. But there you are. It's a simple, simply derived uh, number. The circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. Now, the radius of a circle is half the diameter. Instead of being right across the circle, it's from the centre point out to the circumference. And so it follows on from what we said before, that pi equals c over 2r. You notice we've taken the d out and replaced it with 2r, because uh, d equals 2r, the two radiuses equal a diameter. So nothing's changed at this point. And in fact, we can use our triangle that we encountered at the foundation level to uh, change the subject of the formula or uh, transpose the formula. You can use whichever term you like. And you can transpose uh, this formula uh, by putting the terms into the triangle. I'll put C at the top, pi at the left, and 2R at bottom right. This is the same as we do with V equals IR or P equals IV, etc. So we plug the values in there. We can say then that uh, C equals pi 2R. Or more commonly, we express this as C equals 2 pi R. And you may well remember this in school. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi R. 2 times pi times the radius. So let's have a look at the circle again. There's the radius, and there's the circumference, and there is the equation that we have just uh, derived, which um, uh, relates, or formula, which relates the circumference to the radius. So this is saying to us, in English, that there are two pi radii, or radiuses, in the circumference of a circle. And that is a concept that we need to carry over to the next stage as we start to look at the radian. So perhaps it bears repetition that uh, a circumference is 2 pi radii long. In other words, it's about 6.2 something, 28, I think. Um, in other words, 2 pi, 6.28 at uh, radius is long. Let's have a look then at the radian. This was the second of the three concepts that we are exploring. Let's take a step back though, first of all, and say, why are there 360 degrees in a circle? And here's a circle, and uh, we are uh, labeling here the various points on the circle. Now we haven't done this in a compass rose manner. The compass rose would have zero at the top, and would have 90 um, going clockwise, 180, 270. So that's a clockwise measure starting at the top. Engineers and scientists uh, start at the um, bottom right where it's labeled at 0, 360 and count the measure around to the left. Uh, we won't go into the reasons for that now, but um, it'll become perhaps more apparent later on. So why are there 360 degrees in a circle? Well, the answer is no one knows. Uh, perhaps it was ancient astronomers, uh, and there have been theories that it's to do with the um, progression of the sun on a daily basis, 365 days a year being close to 360. Um, others say it was the Babylonians that uh, figured it out. It also seems to have been independently arrived at by um, Indian scientists. Um, but basically, who knows? The basic message is there is not a natural basis for the degree as a measure of uh, angular displacement. So, if we had an alien come down from space and he looked at the uh, degrees, we tried to communicate with him, 
he would be uh, cross and grumpy and say, I don't understand this, uh, it doesn't seem logical, and therefore I will destroy the earth. Not a desirable outcome. Luckily, there is an alternative uh, measure, uh, a way of measuring angles. And here it is. If we take a circle and draw a radius on it, and label the radius R, and then we project this radius, bend it and project it onto the uh, circumference, then we end up with a slice of cheese, if you like, with um, straight lengths R from the centre to the circumference, and then a curved length R around the circumference. Now, the uh, angle subtended by that curved length R, which is shown in purple, is one radian. And it's written as one with a small c as a um, uh, it, as, um, superscript. Um, and the c stands for circular measure. And that is the abbreviation, if you like, for one radian. You remember, the abbreviation is a small circle, if you like, for degrees. But one c in superscript for one radian. So if our alien came down and he looked and examined that, he would be happy and because that is based, if you like, on fundamental and universal concepts, ones that he can easily understand, and he jumps for joy and decides not to destroy Earth. So let's have a look at that circle uh, in a bit more detail. There we have the one radian. And uh, because we've uh, projected the radius onto the circumference of the circle, we know that there are two pi of those radii around the circle. We did that in the first part of the video when we looked at pi. We said c, the circumference, equals 2 pi r. In other words, we're saying there, there are 2 pi of those r's going around the circle. Now, if that's the case, then there must be 2 pi radians for the complete angle of the circle. For the complete, and I hesitate to say it, for the complete 360 degrees. But um, if there are 2 pi radiuses around the circumference, there must be 2 pi radians to complete the angle of the circle. And this probably doesn't add anything to it, but let's just have a look at that visually. There's one radian, um, and there's a second radian, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. And it leaves about 0.28 of a radian um, unfilled, if you like. So to go all the way round, it would be about 6.28 or 2 pi uh, radians around the circle. And this is just another representative way of looking at it. We can write the, that angle starting with the red going right round and coming back to the red radius. We could write it as 2 pi radians. And to restate it again, there are 2 pi radians in the angle of a circle of full 360 degrees. So that's two concepts that we've ticked off. We've ticked off the concept of pi. And now we've ticked off the concept of an angular measurement, which we call the radian. Let's have go to the uh, third concept then and have a look at angular velocity. And returning then to our uh, circle with um, one cheese slice in it of one radian, uh, if we turn the um, one of the radiuses round, we can see that this angle that's marked there is constantly increasing. And the rate this happens is the angular velocity, and we normally state it in radians per second. Why do I say it's uh, constantly increasing? It's because even after it had gone past uh, 360 and returned back to zero, if you like, we think of it as going 360, 720, etc., etc., etc. So we consider it constantly increasing. So the angular velocity then is omega, which that's the uh, abbreviation for it, and we say it's 2 pi f. 
because there are two pi radians in a complete circle times the rate at which it's going around, the frequency. So it's 2 pi times the frequency. So omega is 2 pi f. And that's what allowed us to do that substitution uh, at the beginning of the video where we said that the inductive reactance is 2 pi fl, or we can call it omega l, because we've substituted omega for the 2 pi f. Let's have a look at three circles or three frequencies happening. The first one will be one hertz, the second two, and the third one four hertz. And you can see that the first one is going around roughly at one time a second, the second one two times a second, and the third one at four times a second. Now let's have a look at the angular velocity for each of these. Omega equals two pi f. So for the first one, it's 2 pi radians per second. And that makes sense, doesn't it? We said one complete revolution is 2 pi radians. And if it goes around in one second, then it's 2 pi radians per second. Now, we might say, well, why don't you write it as 6.28 um, radians per second? Uh, it's common practice to just leave pi as pi, because otherwise we end up with uh, long and difficult manage uh, unmanageable numbers if you like uh, too many decimals flying around the place and it's neater and tidier just to talk about it in uh, so many pi radians per second so the angular velocity then for this one the first one was 2 pi radians per second the second one omega equals 2 pi f and that's uh, 2 pi radians uh, for a single um, cir um, single uh, rotation but two of those happening in a second, so it would be 4 pi radians per second. And similarly, the um, final example, the angular velocity would be 8 pi radians per second. So, um, let's have a summary of what we've learned. We looked at the derivation of pi. We said pi was equal to the circumference over the diameter. And using the triangle, or um, a bit of algebra, we transpose the formula to say c equals 2 pi r. The circumference equals 2 pi times the radius. We understand that a circumference is 2 pi radii in length. That uh, just comes simply from the equation there on the top right. That is just stating it in English, that the c equals 2 pi r. The circumference is 2 pi radii in length. We understand that if a radius is projected onto the circumference, the angle it subtends at the centre is 1 radian. And it comes from that then that the angle of a circle of full 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. And we understand that if a subtended angle is changing with time, then it has an angular velocity, omega, and that omega equals 2 pi f. So, first of all, the concept of angular velocity is not essential for the UK amateur radio examinations. It does aid our understanding of reactance and impedance. And if you wish to study electronics um, further, it's a step towards representing impedance as a complex number which is an essential next step. And um, we will produce a video about this uh, in due course, but perhaps not for a while. So once again, thank you very much for uh, watching this video from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club.